In this uh, very brief video, I'm going to be talking about the screening examination. And during my 30 years of practice, I found that it was important to do a screening examination before looking at the specific problem that the child or infant was brought in to be uh, studied. Uh, and the first step is to be able to see as much as possible the child while still preserving the modesty of the child, particularly the adolescents or, or girls. And for the young child or the infant, it's nice to, to examine the child on the mother's lap. And sometimes you can do quite a complete examination, whether in whichever culture it is. Infants are happier when they're on the mother's lap rather than on an examination table. Well, why screen? Well, the first thing is to know the whole child and to better understand the context to which the current problem has occurred. The second is to avoid missing other problems. You don't want to miss a scoliosis in a teenager or a tumor or some other problem that requires urgent uh, management. And finally, it enhances the credibility with the parent. This parent will feel a doctor is really understanding of their whole child is just not a foot doctor or a heart doctor, but really wants to care for the child in its entirety, which is appreciated and will enhance the, the uh, credibility of the doctor with the family. The first step is just to look at the child as best one can. And when most things can be seen by just looking. You can see it all. For instance, this child, when you just look at the child, just take a minute. And you can see, for example, that there's a short arm arm on this side, which would never, never be noticed if you were just looking at the foot. Or that the child has an angular deformity of the elbow. This is normal with the little valgus, and this is abnormal. So this is important to know, and this requires further evaluation and will probably require some sort of treatment to get, prevent this arm from getting even progressively shorter. Or this child, just by looking, you can see this child has internal tibial torsion. The foot turns in, whereas the kneecaps are straight ahead. So the diagnosis is often made by just looking, not really doing anything more. Look at the posture of the child. For example, this child has a DDH, or dislocated hips on both sides, and has a lumbar lower doses because of a flexion contracture. And that's really evident and leads you to that diagnosis. Or this boy has this round back deformity, and this child boy has a very angular deformity suggestive of a more serious pathological problem. The forward bend test is important because flexibility is generally good. You know, this child has this increased lower doses, but it really reverses things when she forward bends. So the mobility suggests this is just benign. And beware if there's stiffness, like this boy had a tumor and he had stiffness of his back. So tumor, infections, and thing can limit the mobility. And this is important to identify. Look for symmetry. This child has the lumbar scoliosis, and this is very evident in forward bending. Or this child has a cavus foot on the right side. And that's very important to know because that demands a more careful neurological evaluation. Watch the child walk if you have time. And heel and toe walk sort of stresses the uh, balance reactions of the patient. And you can tell a lot by watching the child. If they don't want to walk to you, let them walk away from you. So in summary then, the examination only takes about a minute. It enhances understanding, credibility of the doctor or the caregiver, and avoids misdiagnoses. Look at the whole child with each visit. The examination of the young child is best done in the mother's lap. And just look and you can see a lot of problems if you just take the time. And then the finding of something abnormal or questionable may lead to a more focused examination of that part. This is a global help presentation, and we have many more on our website at globalhelp.org. There are PDF uh, downloadable publications suitable for printing or videos uh, for YouTube evaluation or DVD libraries in, for areas where the Internet is slow or not available. I thank you, and please send any comments to me at staley at uw.edu.